Okay, so now we're on part three of my clock modeling tutorial series, and we're going to be adding the battery case. Now the battery case goes on the back of the clock, and right now the back of the clock is being hidden by the image planes. So we need to hide the image planes so we can get back there. The quickest way, I guess, would be to select them and go to display, hide selection, but I'm going to use display layers to do essentially the, the exact same thing. It's a little more intuitive and it's quicker when you have many image planes or many models and geometry you need to hide and show to get access to different pieces of geometry. Display layers are created and edited using the channel box slash layers editor. To display that, click on this button right here on the status line. Now, set it to layers mode. Make sure it's set to display layers. We're not creating render layers and go to layers, create empty layer. Now the first thing we want to do is change the layer's name from layer 1. To do that, right click on the layer, select the option layer dot dot dot, release, and we're going to call it images. I can't believe that I spelled that wrong twice. Okay, click save. And now we're going to add our image planes to that layer. Select the image planes in the viewport, right click on the layer and click add selected objects and for future references you can remove objects by selecting them and then click remove select objects and by selecting the options I mean the option select objects it will select all the objects inside that layer okay so now by unchecking this V here we hide the objects by disabling that layers visibility so now we can access the back of our clock I'm going to hide the layers slash channel box and continue modeling. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to be modeling the battery case. The battery case is about half the width of this lower half of the clock. So, to do that in Maya, I'm going to go to the back view, switch to wireframe, and create a box. We're going to use this box to cut out this battery tray hole. Now, what we're going to be using is a technique called Boolean modeling, and Boolean modeling is very simple. I'm going to show you a quick example using this cube. I'm going to create an another cube. Remember, you can just go to Create Cube or click on the shelf. It does the exact same thing. So I'm just duplicating, actually. And now I have two cubes. So what I'm going to do is select the first one, select the second one, and go to Mesh, Booleans, Difference. Now what this will do is subtract the second selected cube from the first selected cube. And if I was to go to Mesh, Booleans, Union, it would merge both those objects together. And if I was to go to Mesh, Booleans, Intersection, it will leave the intersecting piece pieces of geometry. So that basically explains booleans in Maya. So back to our battery tray. What we're going to do is go to wireframe view, again, move the battery tray down below the grid, and scale it up to it's about half the size of that lower part of the clock. So yeah, it's about half right there. Make it a bit smaller actually. So. There we go. So now we have about half the size and a little bit more of this clock. And now we're going to move it back to the center. We're going to turn on Snap to Grid. It's this little magnetic icon on a grid. And now we're going to click and drag it to move it up to the origin of the scene. There we go. Now I'm going to turn off Snap to Grid. And drag the box back. And we're going to leave that there for now because we have to prep our body of our clock. Right now, it's completely flat. What I mean by this is the surface has no thickness to it. To cut a hole in it, the surface has to have thickness in it. So to do that, we're going to add thickness by extruding the entire object. So I'm just selecting it. I'm not selecting all the faces. I'm just selecting the entire object just as I would normally. Then. On the Polygons menu set, I'm going to Edit Mesh, Extrude. Now, 
I'm going to select the blue handle that comes up on this manipulator and pull it down. You'll see as you pull it down, it's adding thickness to, the th to this object. Now the plastic is pretty thin, so we just want it to be noticeable. Right about there should do. Going to object mode, and we're done. So now this clock has thickness just like real life plastic. Now, one more thing before we actually cut that hole in the plastic is that we want to round the edges because as we see in a reference image, this hole has rounded edges, so our cutting object will need rounded edges. To do that, we're going to use beveling. Now beveling in Maya simply takes edges and rounds them off, as its name would imply. So what we're going to do is go to edge mode, select all the edges, work our way around the model, and now we're going to go to edit mesh, bevel, and we're going to open up the options. Now these options here you can almost always leave at the default, and now for the width we're going to leave this at the default for now, and the default for segments is 1, but we've set it to 4, and we're going to leave automatically fit bevel to object. Now click bevel, and it's rounded off the edges, but it's rounded them off a little too much according to our reference image. It's just too much bevel. So what we're going to do is, just like we did with the clock body itself, select the object, open up the attributes editor, go back, go back in time, and change the option. Now you might notice that the word width has been replaced with offset. When you go back to change it, that's completely normal. So we're going to reduce the offset to, I'm going to set it to eh, about right. About right there looks right. That value is 3.14. And the segments once again was left at 4. Okay, so one last thing before we actually balloon this model, we're going to duplicate this cube. That way, we have geometry that will be left because when we do when we balloon something, it deletes the geometry used to cut the hole. We'll need this geometry later. So what I'm going to do is select our clock body first, select our cutting geometry, then go to mesh, balloons, different. There we go. Now we have a nice little hole inside our clock for the battery tray. So what we need to do next is fill in that hole. That's where this second cube comes in. We're going to slip it in right where the first cube was and push it inside just a bit because there's supposed to be a battery tray sitting in there. And now we're going to face mode, selecting the faces on the front of it and pressing delete. Now I'm going to vortex mode and I'm going to slide these in just so it fills in the gap. There we go. So now our battery tray has been modeled. We're probably going to treat that, tweak that a bit more later, but for now, that's the geometry. Now we can save the scene as part three. Save. And that concludes the segment.